A lot of languages in the world have a crazy concept called grammatical gender. Italian, Spanish, German, Latin, Ancient Egyptian, where water is feminine, rock is neuter, statues are feminine, girl is neuter, wolves are masculine, duck is feminine, but duckling is neuter, fire and brimstone, rivers and seas, earthquakes, volcanoes, human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. What on earth could be the reason for this chaotic system? Let's answer that question today. I'm Luke and this is Polymathy. Committing to memory the grammatical genders of all kinds of objects is a difficult part of learning another language. Which is where this video sponsor, Busu, can really help you. Busu is an app which allows you to learn languages, but what's special about Busu is that there's a whole community already trying to learn your language who are native speakers of the language you're trying to learn. For example, if you're trying to learn and study Italian, you can have actual conversations with Italians who are maybe trying to learn English. Busu's lessons are fantastic because they take you all the way from a very beginning level all the way up to a B2 level. That's a high intermediate level. And if you're already at a lower intermediate level or at a more advanced beginner level, you can start there and you can progress and bring the language skills that you have to bear into this program. And before you know it, you're going to be using that language in the real world. Oh, tutto posto. Se peccamo dopo. Use the link in the description to sign up for Busu today. About a third of the world's languages demonstrate grammatical gender for inanimate objects. For example, in Italian, frutto is masculine, but frutteria is feminine. Does that mean there's something inherently male about a fruit, but female about a place where they sell fruit? And a gelato is masculine, but gelateria is feminine. Why is this? To English speakers and speakers of languages that don't have grammatical gender, this seems really baffling. And we get the idea that, oh, it's really odd to think of one of these things being male and another thing is female. That's not really what's going on. To understand this fully, we have to go all the way back to Proto-Indo-European. Proto-Indo-European is a giant language family that consists of languages from India through Europe. And something that they all have in common is that almost all of the living Proto-Indo-European languages today have grammatical gender. Even though English comes from a, another language, Anglo-Saxon, Old English, which also had grammatical gender, that's not a part of English anymore. But if we go all the way back to when one of the first languages branched off from Proto-Indo-European, we find Hittite in Anatolia. Mm, good. And Hittite is very interesting because it doesn't have a feminine gender. It has only masculine and neuter. Or more accurately, it looks like it's masculine to us and, and neuter because that's how it compares to other languages like ancient Greek and Latin. In reality, Hittite has an animate gender and an inanimate gender. What happens later, it seems, is that most of the other Indo-European languages come from a version of that proto-language where a feminine gender had split off. So how do we get something like marmo in Italian, which is masculine, or granito, which is also masculine? Is there something male about them? Not intrinsically. Something that can confuse English speakers when learning other European languages for the first time is that, oh, well, like, how is a table feminine or masculine? Or how is the marble masculine? Is there something like male about them? Not at all. It seems that the way that grammatical gender develops in language is first we have people's names. For example, a lot of Italian names end in O if they're masculine and A if they're feminine, like Marco and Maria. Well, Marmo also ends in O, so it can become associated with the masculine gender. Or something like Aqua, which is what my gelato mostly is now, it has an A ending and feminine names often have an a ending. So it makes sense how those will go together. The funny thing about marmo is it comes from the Latin word marmor, 
which is actually neuter. Sasso in Italian comes from saxum, which is neuter. So we see that the neuters have become masculine. Does that mean that Romance languages like Italian are more efficient than Latin? Not at all. The merger of the neuter gender with the masculine gender in Western Romance languages is for the same reason that the case system is gone in these same languages. The endings all became the same. They became the same sound. They became essentially all o or all a for a majority of words. And because of that, there was no way to distinguish neuter from masculine anymore, leaving us with two genders in Western Romance. Romanian, however, is an interesting example of a Romance language that has retained both a case system and the neuter gender. These languages ended up developing grammatical gender for inanimate objects and then maintained them for so many millennia is because they're actually really useful. If I use a pronoun, like a relative pronoun, which has a grammatical gender in it, it's referring to something that came before that was neuter or masculine or feminine. Now what this does for speakers who actually have grammatical gender is it limits the number of possible options of what that thing could refer to. Whereas in a language like English, if I just say that or which, this relative pronoun doesn't necessarily refer to anything. But in Latin, if I say quam or quod or quem, qual, qual, it's clear that I'm referring to something that was just spoken about either by me or someone else in the conversation that was one of the three possible genders. For native speakers and for fluent speakers, this can speed up comprehension. So the reason that grammatical gender exists and persists in so many languages is not because it's some kind of archaism. English is not more efficient than Latin and not vice versa. But they do exist because within that system it creates certain efficiencies that allow for an effectiveness of communication. Essentially every language is equally capable of expressing all of human experience. So when we learn grammatical gender in a language like Latin or ancient Egyptian or Arabic or Greek it's not just something we have to deal with. It's not something that makes the language less efficient. It makes it more efficient. So embrace it, utilize it, and you'll find that in time, you'll actually appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Walete. that you want to um, marmo in Italian is this marble okay good this could I need to yeah good Marmos. Okay.